Hello. As many of you know, I have a lot of free time. And what I'm doing is not exclusively, but I'm watching series on Netflix, like many of you probably. I'm not necessarily looking for the big American blockbuster, but some production from around the world. Uh, these days, I'm watching a series on the life of Leon Trotsky, a key player in the Soviet uh, Revolution. And if you're not afraid of watching something uh, Russian with subtitle, maybe it could be interesting. And maybe because I'm watching um, character, people, historical uh, people, completely consumed by their desire to change the world and in well to destroy an old world and to create a new one for better and worse in case of Trotsky maybe because I'm in this kind of uh, mood that this moon influenced the way I'm looking at this week uh, gospel passage more specifically from the gospel according to Luke chapter 6, what is also called the Luke's version of the Beatitudes. Because I'm, I'm saying revolutionary message because for 2,000 years we have heard the, the, the stories, we have heard the words, and somehow I believe we have almost tame Jesus' proclamation. Because when we hear, bless hard the poor, bless hard, blessed are the hungry, blessed are those who weep, often we will say, oh, how true, how beautiful, wonderful, how comforting. But in today's world, and I'm pretty sure in Jesus' world, we haven't changed much in 2,000 years as a human race. When we think of those who are truly blessed, what are we thinking of? Those who have money. Because it's all about the money. Or the fame. Or the position we have in society. No, those who are in the North American society, those who are truly blessed, according to our common culture, our wi common wisdom around us, is those who are rich, not poor. Those who can buy more food they can eat every week. Those who are healthy. Those who have a perfect little beautiful family. Those who have no drama in their life. Those who are truly blessed, we are told. What Jesus is proclaiming in this passage is nothing short than a revolution. A revolution that say that in God's kingdom, God's realm, God's kingdom, regardless how we like to call it, everything will be reversed. Everything will be turned upside down. The logic of our current world will not apply, will not help us in this new world, this new reality. And maybe that's why, maybe that explain the part that often ministers like to skip, the woes that comes with it. Because in Matthew's version is bless, 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 bless. In Luke, we have bless, 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 and woe, woe, woe to a lot of people. Woe those who are rich, those who are filled, those who are laughing, you know. Probably those enjoying their privileges, those who are closing their eyes or rationalizing the poverty and the hardship of their fellow human being. Well, it will be difficult for them in this new world Jesus is announcing. Not because God will not love them. No, no, no. Not because they will not accept it. I don't think that's the point. Probably because... In this upside down, upside down world, all the rules, all the practices, 
all the ways of being the common sense that help those people in this world will not work. And most likely they will be lost. They will struggle to adjust. They will be afraid, maybe. And the good news in this proclamation is that Jesus does not proclaim or call for a revolution in the future, in another world. No, it's right here, right now it can begin. We can offer hope to those who are left behind those who are overlooked, those who are voiceless in our world. Transformation is possible for those who benefit from the system. Those who, for, for those who the system is designed to fulfill, well, and even those who are abusing the system, transformation is possible in this new revolutionary world. And, and it asks us, what are my privilege and how I use them? Because somehow we already have some sort of privilege or, or another. For me, for example, well, I'm a heterosexual, white, middle-aged man. In fact, for North American, you could take my picture and put it in the dictionary under privilege or white privilege. That's me. And I did nothing to earn that. It fell on me. So what I'm doing with it? I'm gathering more or I'm trying to help those who are left behind, using that privilege to help others. In the same way, for those who have been who are broken, those who cannot find their place in our society, those who are destitute. Are they able to hear God's message, Jesus' proclamation, that something different can happen for them, something revolutionary? Can they open themselves and let that sink in? And that's the challenge for all of us. And sometimes we're in both position, depending on how we look at things. It's rarely one or the other. It's one and the other. The challenge is to, to not necessarily try to identify who's in, who's out, but keep our eye on this revolution. Another world is possible. Another world, completely different from this old world. Something new, something different, from different bases, is possible right now. It can begin right now. And that's what we're all invited to discover. How can we play a part in it? Once again, thank you for watching and listening. I am the lectionary man, Reverend Stefan Vermette. And until next time, take care of yourself and bye-bye.